In May of 2018, MathWiz and I released two of our most well-received videos ever, The Importance of Talk no Jutsu and The Conflict and Compromise of Uchiha Sasuke. I do think these videos possessed an understanding of the series that simply was not common on the platform at the time, but though that is the case, looking back I do think there is a bit of a gap in the readings. While one video explores Sasuke's gradually changing perspective and character, where the other does the same through Naruto's specific method of understanding, and focusing purely on that arc of change, I think something is lost. After all, Naruto's was not the only journey in which he faced those who echoed himself, echoed dark futures that he would come to avoid. But where Naruto changed those he encountered by challenging and addressing their hypocrisy, and those encounters gradually changed him, Sasuke's battles were defined by tenacity and stagnancy, hypocrisy not met with hope, but despair, unrecognized by all sides. Possessing a Kekai Genkai, Haku was at once blessed and cursed. His unique abilities were powerful shinobi arts, and yet for that power, he was maligned, left an orphan after his father learned of that blood. In a world that only saw the power of ninjas as objects to be used, mercenaries bound to their contractor or their nation, it was an existence not so dissimilar to Naruto and Sasuke. While Naruto served as a Jinchuriki host, Konoha's strongest human weapon, and one liable to be disposed of if needed, Sasuke's clan had been pushed to the fringes of Konoha, Tobirama citing their deep love and hatred, tied to the powerful Sharingan, as reason for Konoha's continued trepidation, fear, and resultant marginalization around the Uchiha clan. And through that abuse came the planned coup, and resulting massacre, leaving Sasuke alone. That deep loneliness was one all three of them felt. But Haku had one thing Naruto and Sasuke hadn't had easily, yet continually sought. Recognition. Though it was only as a shinobi tool, Zabuza saw himself in Haku, his pain, his emptiness, and as he was a shinobi tool, he took Haku in as one of his own. Such was the world they lived in. And yet, though Haku was wielded as such, and he accepted his fate as a tool to be wielded, it was not because he was a tool. Accepted completely by Zabuza, Haku faithfully and unquestionably served the one who recognized him. It was his humanity that informed his actions as a shinobi tool, and thus, Though he tried to cut out his heart, vowing to kill Naruto and Sasuke even though he did not want to, he could not. Such was his contradiction. It was his humanity in itself that informed his actions as a tool. Though he aimed to kill his heart, he never could. And thus, neither could those around him who resembled him. Sasuke sacrificed himself for Naruto's sake, protecting that comrade even at the expense of his desire to kill Itachi. Naruto is poised to kill Haku to become a fully-fledged shinobi of the world by killing someone even if he didn't want to, but didn't get the chance. And Zabuza, stripped of his status as a tool as Gato cast him out, came to act on his humanity, forced to recognize it from Naruto's words. It was Haku's life that evoked the very core of the shinobi world, but though his death was the result of those same ideals, that contradiction of motive would resound in the same world through Sasuke. Though they were so alike, taking the same course of action for one they cared about, he didn't understand Haku, and wouldn't come to for a long time. Aiming to fulfill his promise to Sakura and take Sasuke back to the village, Naruto utterly failed, both in saving Sasuke and, as a sharp contrast to many of those Sasuke would come to face, failed in realizing his own ideals. Though much of his character arc would revolve around coming to understand and compromise with those he faced, in his desperation with Sasuke, he could only think to overpower him, not able to grasp the depth of his pain. Though they were both lonely, Naruto had never known family to lose, fighting to avoid that fate by trying to save Sasuke the one he saw as a brother, and in that failure, Sasuke is reflected, responding to the world around him, as Naruto did not compromise with him despite Sasuke doing so by allowing their battle, allowing Naruto the chance to test his ideals, Sasuke came to refuse compromise, his later opponents earning no particular mercy or concession, Sasuke never reaching out to them just as Naruto hadn't truly tried to connect to Sasuke, and like Naruto failed to try to understand Sasuke, Sasuke would not come to understand those foes either. 
Naruto's failure led to Sasuke taking on his worst aspects. And as such, where Naruto would grow from his failure, coming to understand his foes, products of the shinobi world, and an attempt to understand Sasuke, Sasuke would not. Sasuke's foes were mere obstacles, not worth truly engaging with, and not worth understanding. And for that, in some ways, Sasuke would be as stagnant as those he fought. Orochimaru, of a scientific mind, pushes for progress and advancement of the world. The pinwheel that had stopped was that of Konoha, a village largely unchanged since the rule of its first Okage. Once in position to become its fourth Okage, he was passed by for that promotion. Orochimaru's progress not coming to the village by choice as Minato's rule left that pinwheel motionless. So, if the pinwheel would not move, regardless of his sentiment, Orochimaru would destroy it. His past feelings would die as he would usher in something new to the world. What he offered didn't matter. Orochimaru's idea of change is change for the sake of change itself. That there was change at all was better than stagnancy. Testing the limits of ninjutsu, of science, and of humanity, Orochimaru had found the progress he wanted, but in exchange, he himself changed, becoming anything but human. Aiming to surpass even death, that fact in itself was his stagnancy. Where much of the series is concerned with the new generation, those who will come to surpass the old while inheriting their will of fire, Orochimaru's hypocrisy rested in his inhumanity. Through using others as test subjects, as tools for his ends, there was no fostering of the new whatsoever, only a death grip on the past he could not let go of. While he tried to destroy the pinwheel that was Konoha, his own remained stuck still. With the fourth Hokage dead and his former teammates old and grey, it was only Orochimaru who still remained in that past, unable to surpass the third Hokage who was able to die for his village, for the next generation, and unable to surpass Itachi, who might as well have looked straight through him. Unable to grow on his own, to surmount those who stood in his way, Orochimaru looked to the next generation, not to foster, but to absorb, to become. Sasuke was all too convenient a receptacle, young and quick to learn, while even offering up his body if it meant defeating the one they had a mutual interest in crushing. But after two years with Orochimaru, Sasuke's growth had closed the gap so much that such a sacrifice hardly seemed necessary to defeat Itachi. After all, Orochimaru had changed so little despite wanting progress. Fighting their battle for dominance, Orochimaru's ideals were realized. The snake shed its skin, and out came a hawk. Orochimaru's pinwheel had been set in motion by the wind from Sasuke's very own, one that had been steadily blowing since well before he met Orochimaru. Oira <laughs> Deidara is loud, in appearance, personality, and jutsu. As a young teen being scouted by the Akatsuki, his form of expression was no different several years later as an adult. His beliefs were firm. Art was an explosion. What Deidara valued was that brief transience, that which didn't last outside of the minds of those who experience it. And yet, that loudness is but a distraction as Deidara, much like Orochimaru and Sasuke, was so far underneath that same person they had been cowed by. Itachi evoked his art just as well, if not better, without even trying. Sharingan blazing in front of the sun, in between two statues displaying the same Tomoe, such a scene in the brief midst of a fleeting battle would never be seen again. Yet it shook Deidara to his core, remaining with him to the end of his clash with Sasuke. Much like that boy, he was desperate for recognition, Deidara's loudness at once akin to a young Naruto's pleas for attention, where his specific efforts to surpass Itachi by learning anti-Sharingan techniques similarly evoked Sasuke. Out of a desire to surpass Itachi and have him recognize his art, Deidara aimed to master his craft, to at last surpass Itachi, refusing to recognize his capabilities in the art of battle, one that fit Deidara's image of art but not his own expression, leading to his need to reject it. Battling against Sasuke, neither of them looked at the other, 
only Itachi. But while Sasuke sought recognition only from Itachi, Deidara, being looked down on by yet another Uchiha, another one that was capable of the eye techniques that had moved Deidara so, as much as he tried to reject that notion, refused to be belittled, refusing Sasuke's judgment of himself and his art. Prepared to offer himself, he would force Sasuke to recognize him and his art, even if Sasuke had no interest in continuing the fight that would create more of that transient expression. Deidara's hypocrisy was that he begged to be recognized, but refused to acknowledge anyone else. Though Sasuke did not care for Deidara, he was fully aware of Itachi's capabilities. After all, how could he fail to recognize the older brother he looked up to, who had received all the praise he'd once wanted to similarly receive from their father? Unable to recognize anyone, Deidara would ironically fail to be recognized by anyone. Itachi never witnessed his explosions, and his grandest one was never seen by Sasuke, who hid away in the Maw of Manda to avoid it. A life unable to recognize, or be recognized, consumed in a flash. The first clash of Sasuke and Itachi was marked not by the Battle of Brothers, but of minds. Illusions within illusions. Though they had once shared so much, now they masked themselves behind barriers. At no point was mutual understanding in mind, only of forcing the other to recognize them. Sasuke wanted to surpass Itachi, while Itachi wanted something greater for Sasuke. In his machination, Itachi being slain was all part of the gambit, one that would have Sasuke returning to Konoha a hero, one who had killed multiple Akatsuki members, including the one who had perpetuated the infamous Uchiha massacre. That truth was one behind the illusions of Itachi, one maintained even without his powerful Sharingan. All of his torment, his performance, outwardly was the supposed measurement of his capabilities, but inwardly was only meant to get Sasuke to believe such. Itachi caused him great pain, but perhaps that was because Itachi too had experienced so much, loved by his parents even as he drove a blade into their backs. Those layers of illusion were all over a grand truth underneath those lies. Sarutobi even compared his thinking as a child to that of a Hokage, the epitome of the stop pinwheel that Itachi sought to support. Itachi truly believed in the core ideology of the world, that in which shinobi were nothing more than tools of the systems they supported, their real emotions and feelings secondary to their mission. To preserve peace, Itachi participated in the Uchiha massacre, killing so many that he loved, with one exception in the one he cared the most about. But even that exception was still pushed to be beholden to his ideals. Itachi's plot was one that manipulated the one he loved no differently than a tool. Sasuke's emotions and feelings didn't matter. What mattered was that Itachi believed he was thinking of him, even as he used Sasuke for what he believed to be Sasuke's own benefit. But while his hypocrisy ended in his failure, his death was not that failure, but the logical endpoint of his ideals. As a ninja tool, he had to kill so much of his heart, ending the lives of his family. So in his own schemes, he wielded himself much like a tool. Where Haku, loving Zabuza, allowed himself to be used as a tool, Sasuke was wielded as a tool for the sake of Itachi's love, not Sasuke's own feelings. Though Shinobi had to kill their hearts, that heart still drove so many of their actions, even as they acted in regards to tools. In wielding Sasuke like a tool, negligence of his younger brother's feelings, one who had little care for Shinobi as tools, that brother would very much put his own feelings first, even over those of the brother he came to understand. The illusions gone, Sasuke came to understand Itachi like never before. Seeing his older brother as a victim of a broken world that saw massacre as an acceptable price to pay for peace. In wanting Sasuke to be a hero of that village, Itachi further supported the system Sasuke viewed as broken, by making a concession in his ideals through Sasuke, while also holding Sasuke to his own ideals. Itachi's hypocrisy was evoked as Sasuke came to stand against everything Itachi had aimed to protect. Itachi's illusion had been broken as Sasuke came to understand him where he'd tried to resist, Itachi having failed to understand Sasuke himself. Evocative of the flaws repeated by the present day world of Shinobi, Danzo believed in and upheld everything Sasuke came to reject. After all, it was him who convinced Itachi to go through with the massacre while the other village elders debated on how to deal with the coup. Even if their involvement had been more passive, they still had let Itachi die, still benefited from his sacrifice without acknowledging or accepting him. And so, Sasuke believed Konoha should be destroyed, 
starting with the one at the top who had no small part in that massacre. In fact, Donzo had benefited from that blood in more ways than mere peace. Of course, the use of those eyes was acceptable to him. Such was to utilize the sacrifice of the Achiha so the loss of life did not go to waste, Donzo arguing that Sasuke's rejection of Itachi's actions wasted his brother's life, even though his aim had been to entrap and control Sasuke even after death. But while Donzo espoused the virtue of self-sacrifice, he was not one who could simply let himself die, his hypocrisy residing in his cowardice. Years ago, on a mission with the then second Okage and the future third Okage, Tobiram opposed a choice to the team regarding sacrifice, as one of them would have to play the role of distraction to save the others. Under the burden of sacrifice of the few for the many, though Donzo so easily would come to push that burden onto others in the form of the Uchiha massacre, when facing this choice all he felt was fear and hesitation, but the burden was taken from him, Sarutobi offering to make the sacrifice, before placing the burden of protecting the group from then on, not onto their leader Tobirama, but Donzo, his rival. Donzo pushed against him, claiming he was about to offer himself up as well, espousing his ideals regarding self-sacrifice, only for Tobirama to shut him down. From the beginning, Tobirama was prepared to make the sacrifice himself. The Hokage is one who walks in front of others, another passing to lead only when he steps down from being Hokage. Evoking the will of fire, Tobirama passed the title of Hokage onto Sarutobi, the one who stepped up first, also thinking of the future by placing his hopes in Donzo over Tobirama because Donzo would be there for the village in the future when Tobirama eventually gave up his title, while Donzo pushed away from his competitor and thought only of himself. But Donzo didn't take that from the incident. Blinded by his own ideals, ones rejected by Tobirama, who denied him for Hokage even after he'd expressed his code openly, he internalized that his failure to become the third Hokage was simply because Sarutobi had offered to sacrifice himself first. When opportunity struck, Donzo tried to move ahead, coming into the role of the sixth Hokage by force. At the summit, he tried to achieve unity not by understanding, but by deception and manipulation. Donzo acted like he believed a shinobi should, and that was what he viewed as strength, deriding the third's teaching as he insisted to the fire daimyo that it was his strength that the air needed. But that only highlighted his contradiction as he continued to sacrifice others without applying his own ideals to himself. In trying not to waste the sacrifice of the Uchiha, he weaponized Sharingan he was not capable of wielding properly, Sasuke beating his powerful mock Izanagi with a simple genjutsu. Sasuke carried the feelings of those Uchiha that had been sacrificed, pushing against the systems they'd once planned to usurp in their coup, better representing exactly what Donzo claimed, hiding behind Karin, as Donzo continued to contradict himself, claiming he was too valuable to be sacrificed, Sasuke showed him exactly what he was willing to sacrifice for his ends doing what Donzo did easily without the righteous beliefs of his own to contradict. The Hokage walks in front, Donzo remarking that Sarutobi was always ahead of him. Through contradicting his own beliefs, Donzo always trailed behind, sacrificing those who might have walked with him. And without anyone behind him, when he finally overcame his cowardice, sacrificing himself to bring down Sasuke and Tobi, it amounted to nothing, his sacrifice meaningless without a fire to foster. Though Kabuto was wrong about Itachi, in claiming that he and Sasuke were similar, Kabuto was rather on point. Where Sasuke, always beneath Itachi, now walked a path to exceed him, to surpass him, Kabuto too walked further on the same path as the one he emulated following up on Orochimaru's true ideals while Sasuke took on Itachi's dark illusion to subvert the one he aimed to surpass. Both saw the one they looked to as perfection, Kabuto striving for a higher form through surpassing Orochimaru, while both the younger Sasuke and younger Itachi saw Itachi as perfect and infallible, Itachi admitting that the false perception of himself was the very reason he'd gone through with the massacre. And, in an instance of Kabuto's words ringing correct in a way Sasuke would come to find out, both of them had based their identity on another only for that to crumble upon the realization of further truths. Kabuto, a war orphan, had accepted the identity granted to him by the nun Nono and a simple pair of glasses, but after years of working as a spy that led to their battle, Kabuto killing a Nono who no longer recognized him, the spy lost the foundation that made him who he was. And Sasuke had spent so long trying to earn recognition, that after the battle with Kabuto when Itachi gave it to him, Sasuke followed questions of what shinobi were, and what villages were, with one of, what am I? His battle with one who lacked identity led to Sasuke being forced to reconcile and challenge his own identity and purpose 
when the feelings of bitterness and envy he based so much of himself around had suddenly vanished. Though they were similar, Sasuke found power by rejecting others and pushing them away, where Kabuto had nothing, taking everything, drawing from many of Orochimaru's experiments as he became a dragon to Orochimaru's snake. But it's through his path and his faults that Sasuke's are revealed. Though Kabuto absorbed abilities from many, in his focus on Orochimaru he ironically became trapped by the ideals of the one he sought to surpass, believing all his accomplishments were his own, while also taking his identity from others, Kabuto was wrapped in contradiction, which Itachi sought to break. If Izanagi allows the user to subvert their fate, in doing so it can allow them to remain in their faulty ideals, an ability that rejects reality in service of the self. Izanami traps those who are trying to subvert their reality, designed to reign in the pride and power of the Uchiha, enforcing a standard of honor and humility. Izanami can only be broken by accepting the outcome the target is trying to avoid through Izanagi. Of all the characters focused on so far, only Deidara and Danzo failed to get a second chance to recognize the contradictions and faults in their ideals. Under Edo Tensei, Haku came to understand Zabuza's true feelings, that he cared for Haku as more than a mere ninja tool. Zabuza asking Kakashi to defeat them so that they could return to their eternal peace not as tools, but as humans. Orochimaru returned, accepting the will of fire by allowing himself to watch Sasuke, one who is stirring the pinwheel into motion. Orochimaru content to watch it spin. Itachi came to recognize the will and strength Sasuke had found as his younger brother matured enough to challenge him, his love never fading away as he finally recognized his brother, coming to understand that perfection could not be reached alone, that Sasuke could have potentially come to a solution he never could. And Kabuto is forced to recognize his own identity, to accept and live with the mistakes and failings that he'd tried to make up for by changing, by becoming someone that he wasn't. Joining Obito, the two of them had rejected themselves in service of being tools to their ends, but as he'd come to accept his past, both the positive and the negative, he was able to break free of the Izanami, choosing to aid Sasuke. Rather than simply advancing past Orochimaru, he advanced past himself and his own flaws. Understanding of others can only come after understanding of oneself, and of those who Sasuke would oppose, so few could have been said to achieve that level of self-understanding. Madara understood that contradiction was only human. Madara understood his own contradiction believing that to achieve peace through conflict was acceptable as long as he rose above his humanity. Understanding so much of himself, he would end up understanding no others. More so than any other character, Madara represents the extreme of Sasuke's path. Cutting away or losing everything, Madara had no bonds, no connections that he recognized, only strife. He would stand alone, above it all, those other shinobi only fit to be his tools. But in understanding only himself, he truly understood little. Where Naruto sought to surpass hypocrisy through advancement of the self, Madara, by accepting his hypocrisy as unavoidable fact, would come to change nothing and remain stagnant. He sought to unravel the shinobi world, achieving peace through conflict, ideologically willing to cut off those desires and feelings, treating himself as a tool while also getting in the way of his goals for his desires, fighting even when it might be in his best interest not to. Not unlike Obito, who wore the mask of Tobi in an attempt to distance himself from the humanity and better serve as Madara's tool, in not aiming to change himself, in espousing ideals his actions did not fall in line with, he fell into the same contradiction as Obito, and met the same failing. By not respecting his own humanity, Obito had allowed himself to be manipulated by Madara. By not respecting his own humanity, even as he wielded others as tools, Madara was being wielded himself by one who existed outside of humanity, outside of the contradictory world of Shinobi. The mother of Chakra was the actual god Madara only strove to be like. Willing to achieve peace through war, Madara met his end by someone who felt no differently, by someone who held a stronger grip on the fates of the shinobi world than he ever could. But although, or even because he was not a foe of Sasuke's, Obito changed. And not well after his defeat like Haku, Orochimaru, Itachi, bringing us to change and recognition of failings, refusal to accept one's own hypocrisy, becoming better than it, bringing us to Naruto and Sasuke. ここで過去の過ち、迷いはすべて断ち切り一新する。お前を切るのを始めとしてな。そしてそれを亡き兄へと注ぎ。
とむらう最後の血としよう俺は全部過去の人たちから学んできたんだってばよ失敗して次どうすりゃいいか考えるってことをよ While Naruto was unlike any other opponent of Sasuke's, Sasuke was all too much like those Naruto had faced. Both of them clashed with the shinobi of a hypocritical world, but only one of them truly sought understanding. Representing one of two conflicting ideals of shinobi, Naruto took on Jiraiya's ideals that a shinobi was to endure. Through failure and understanding, Naruto had endured and overcome. Recognizing himself within his opponents and surmounting their failures, Naruto had gradually grown. Not simply through conflict, but through understanding. By growing in that world and seeing the perspective of those he faced, he gradually changed himself. Haku and Zabuza showed him the importance of protecting comrades one found important. His goal of becoming Hokage changing from merely earning recognition as early as a conversation with Haku, while Zabuza would deny that truth until Naruto dragged it out of him, showing that through understanding Naruto could slowly change this faulty world. Gara had been hated by those around him and hated them in turn. A fate Naruto saw as a possibility in himself while he reached out to become someone for Gara like Iruka had been for him. Granny Chio, though not a foe, learned from Naruto the importance of taking responsibility for one's own actions. While her capability for putting her life on the line for that responsibility would be something Naruto evoked later at the Five Kage Summit, promising to bring back Sasuke or die trying. Pain, consumed by his loss and hatred, killed Jiraiya, but through that action forced Naruto to on some level experience the same loss that Sasuke had. And better understand himself. And Obito challenged Naruto the most strongly of all, truly helping him put Itachi's words of recognition into his action as he worked with others, those who'd helped him learn and define who he was as Obito rejected himself, before coming to regain himself and the goal he'd left behind, standing in front of Naruto and Kakashi as Okage if only for a moment. Like with Sasuke, so many of those Naruto battled with came to die, but in their last acts, they couldn't be more different. And coming to understand both himself and his foes, pushing them to change with his talk no jutsu, those that would die did so not as shinobi tools, but as humans, their last acts done to reconcile their beliefs and desires that they'd previously tried to bury. Zabuza protected Haku's memory, killing the one he'd previously been beholden to as a shinobi mercenary. Chiyu gave the remainder of her life for the one her village had hurt so deeply, adhering to the words of one from the village she hated. Who'd been able to reach out and connect to Gara where no one from his home nation had been able to before? Pain put his faith in Jiraiya and Naruto, using his last jutsu to undo some of the destruction he'd caused in separation of his own pain. And from that steady journey of understanding those he'd fought, Naruto reached the point where he could fight Sasuke, not to overpower and defeat him like in their first clash, but to understand, to reconcile, and compromise. But where Naruto evoked the meaning of Shinobi Red as endurance, Sasuke took on and evoked the meaning espoused by Haku, that of heart cut away by blade. Though he loved Itachi and came to protect Konoha, though he saw Naruto as his only friend, to enact his plan he had to cut away that heart, those bonds. Like the Naruto of old, Sasuke was uninterested in understanding his opponents. But through Sasuke's arc of change, though he surpassed his foes in several ways, by refusing to understand or acknowledge them, he too failed to acknowledge his own faults. His plan to exterminate the Bijou and rule the Shinobi world through his power alone would achieve progress, but in its self centered execution, it would create a stopped pinwheel. Sasuke unable to progress outside of himself, much like Orochimaru. That plan would only work in his lifetime, his eventual death, something the remainder of the Shinobi world would have to handle afterwards. That art, something of a long winded explosion, doomed to fade away forgotten like Daedara. By killing the Kages, Bijou, Naruto, and any who opposed him, Sasuke would save many through the sacrifices of the few, internalizing the same thing Itachi did, that which Sasuke once stood against in his efforts to destroy Konoha. Like Kabuto, he tried to reject those who'd influenced his growth, the one who stood opposed to him most of all. Like Donzo's last, he would take everything onto himself without thinking of the future beyond him at all. Like Madara, he was willing to stand alone for the remainder of his life, even though he would never have wanted loneliness. And in failing to understand his opponents, In failing to understand himself, he would meet his match in Naruto. Like Haku was unable to truly kill his own heart, Sasuke could never. Though he tried to cut off his bonds with Konoha, with Naruto, Naruto kept reaching out, forming a bond if only through battle. But Sasuke, once willing to die for his sake, willing to throw away everything for Naruto and Naruto alone, still could not cut off his heart. Making a concession for one, 
he finally grew to become more like his opponent, unable to surpass one who had addressed their contradiction unlike those he faced before. Like Naruto, he could compromise, he could change. Against one who rejected his own hypocrisy, against one who reached out to understand him, Sasuke changed. Rejecting the shinobi world, by fighting its products, Sasuke only reaffirmed his position in that world, and its flaws. But Naruto protected him from that world as he fought to protect it. Sasuke's foes were never quite killed by Sasuke. Haku died for Zabuza's sake, killed by Kakashi, a product of the shinobi world and one all too familiar with Haku's beliefs. Orochimaru was absorbed. Deidara and Danzo killed by suicide attacks. Itachi his sickness and sacrifice for Sasuke's sake. Kabuto saved by Itachi. And Madara ended by Zetsu and Kaguya. It was a result of their own ideals that they met their ends. Where Naruto's ideals were not an end, but a continued struggle. Shinobi do not cut away what matters to them. For then they would not have chosen to be Shinobi. But Shinobi can endure. Naruto is prepared for further conflict even for betrayal. But even if Sasuke stood against him again, Naruto would continue to endure and face whatever he had to if it meant upholding his beliefs. And it was through Talk No Jutsu that Naruto came to prevent Sasuke from meeting that endpoint reflected in all of his opponents and their defeats. It was through Talk No Jutsu that Naruto saved Sasuke. As always, I would like to thank my patrons, Dojo32161, Brian Nesseth, Florbu, Kurosawa, Mohamed Akim, Bro Rike, Tangoon, Sam Belmeyer, Zazojo, Justice Man, Offline But Not, and Vanort. And thank you for watching.